this particular image I've brought in is a little bit smaller. Uh, the only saving grace is there's enough detail in this image to create a, a decent polygonal uh, creation. Uh, the image was tilted a little bit to the left, so what I did was just straightened it up. Um, it's going to help help me decide if I want to do one half and then flip it and then replicate the other side. Uh, I'll show you in a, in a moment. That doesn't always look good. Um, so first things first, you're going to select it and you're going to command to to lock the background. Uh, I've drawn a center line to kind of to help me. Now, it might assist you if you just bring some guides in. Um, might be helpful, might not. I don't know, I've not done enough of these to really kind of think, would something like that be helpful? Because um, I'm sure you could get to a point where it just gets too muddy. Actually, it's not too bad by the time you zoom in. Uh, I'm going to be converting these and then putting these up in the video section on Canvas. Uh, I want to go to Window. Uh, we're going to go to Layers. Let me zoom out. Oh, there we go. I'm actually zoomed in quite a bit because uh, of a, of a pre previous video that I was doing. So I'm going to create a new layer. And this is going to be my pen tool layers. Uh, and that's where I'm going to start drawing. I'm going to use um, no fill. And I'm just grabbing a color a minute where I go to there's my window color. Because this page is uh, is all over the place. It's, it's much larger than my screen. I'm going to choose RGB. And I just want to create something that's brighter. Some obnoxious color. That'll work. Pull these off to the side. And then look at it and think, okay, you know, where can polygons triangles go uh, I don't want to make them too big because if I did a and I'm just going to draw now you can see I'm holding the shift and the shift is going to make it snap vertical or horizontal or 45 degrees um, I'm going to try something like that now this is way too big just want to show you Uh, uh, uh. Window, workspace, reset, uh, essentials classic. Uh, let's do uh, color. Bring that one in. Again, resetting my workspace isn't going to work in this because uh, my screen is much smaller. I'm going to choose stroke. Bring that one over. Butt these up. And I'm going to show options for both. And I'm going to change to something fine. So I got... Let me see what it looks like. So right now, that's the finest stroke that you can do by just pressing up and down the arrows. Um... 0.25 uh, and I think that'll work for what I want I'm going to shrink this down to create like a nose tip um, and then really it's a case of painting in the arrow the, the triangles that would really kind of make sense for, for this creation 
get get in some of the main key ones. And it's really a, 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 a personal choice what you would uh, would rather have in your creation. And then in the settings for this, you're going to have uh, view. I would do keep snap to point on, turn the others off. Keep on snap to point. So that means that when you, if I was to do this triangle here, it's snapping to the previous triangle that was already created. So when we zoom in, even though it's got a weird overhang, which all that is, is in here. If we change that to cap and then round corner, all of those will disappear. Zoom out. I like to start away. And then don't, you cannot just close a gap there because you're not going to be able to select it and fill it. You need to start off to the, you need to be clever you need to start off at the side connect it and then once you've got a triangle then you can snap it so because if you go um, click click let me see if that will work actually let me see if I'm right on that pen start here to ah, it's allowing me let me go let me see if I can so I got one triangle all right, so it's allowing me to do that. Just make sure you draw every time a full a full triangle. Do not just um, don't just uh, fill like the line to make a triangle. All right. Because you're not going to have the ability to go in and. Uh, and even this, just because I'm doing it this way, doesn't mean that it's going to look best this way. But whatever you do, keep it roughly the same size when you're doing areas, because otherwise you're going to draw attention and focus to those areas that there's a concentrated pattern or not enough pattern. And again, we're completing full... Uh, triangles so that we can select those and fill them in. Again, this one on the nose might be way too big. I'll only know when I kind of see it in context with the others. Right. So I'm going to add, you know, some of these white, uh, some of these uh, 
be be careful of areas like this because you need to precisely over lap those little areas because when they're printed and they're big they're going to stand out like a sore thumb and I'll point them out all right so you're going to slowly build it up you know more and more and when you see an area that maybe kind of shouts out that it should be a triangle, add it, you know, because you might forget it. Like down here, here's like a some sort of triangle going on. Again, I might break this one up because it's very big. Uh, the lips as well, perfect examples to do. Triangles. Again, I might break this up. Blah, blah, blah. And then the other part of this is going to be filling in. So I would, uh, you're just going to use two tools. One is the select, which is the V, and the other is the eyedropper, which is the I. So right now, I'm in the eyedropper. If I press the command key or the control key on your on the uh, on your Chromebook, possibly, um, I would see what one it is that you need to that works. But that will cycle you through the two tools. So if I do start around the eye. I press the uh, command command tool. So I'll do that again, just because I got a feeling some of you are going to be like, "What?" So here's the space bar, right? The V. Uh, so, the, sorry, V key gives you the uh, the select tool. All right. If I press the I, it's now an eyedropper. So I s press the command or the control, select it. Then choose a color inside. Don't, don't just click anything. Choose something that kind of makes sense for that area. Then you're going to choose the next one. And look at the other colors around it. What does it, what makes sense for what you're creating? And if you don't like it, you know, choose a different shade of it. And it's only when you kind of draw back and you stand back and look at it that you'll realize that, oh, you know what, that's too dark, that should be lighter. This one's going to be dark. This one's going to be light. So I'm going to use this color here. This one's going to be light. This one's going to be dark. You know, and you can make real quick work of it once you get rolling. And the pink outline is going to change as soon as you've changed the color. So we got the, the eye. Let's go in and do a little bit of the nose. It, it's not complete and it's not great. Um... Maybe I would break up the eyes, the whites of the eyes, into a few more pieces. But let's do these down here, because I just want to show you the flip. You know, the wrong color can really mess up your piece, so just be mindful of what you're choosing. 
Let's do some of the eyebrow. Uh, then I'll do I'll do this one. So I'm just going to select this side of the lip, delete it. And then let's have a look. Uh, actually, let's do this one. All right. So again, we can click on the background image. It's all locked. It's all good. I'm going to select that. Copy. Paste it. I've pasted it in place. I'm going to transform. Uh, am I? Uh, transform. I'm going to reflect. That's good. And I'm just going to use the uh, horizontal arrows and the uh, uh, shift. And it almost doesn't matter if one side of the face isn't matched completely. As long as you do like one side, if it's straight on, you can uh, kind of match it. And you see that in a very short amount of time, you can get a lot of work done. All right. So that's, in essence, the, uh, the, the quick um, illustrator method. Of course, the beauty about this is then that once you've got rid of the photo, uh, actually, let me go into my layers. Let's do this right. And I'm just going to hide and lock the photo. I'm going to select on my face. And the cool thing is now this is Vexor. And as you know, Vexor can be as big as you want. And if this was any good, it would um, it would look like a face, but there's a lot of face, the chin, the forehead, and the air, hair missing. But you get the, the idea. So I'm going to stop recording this, and I'm going to do the Photoshop one next.